this one's wife explodes over Tiara. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Yes, if you were in the Monte Shit Show area, you may well have heard the sirens and the thermonuclear explosion that occurred in recent hours as a consequence of the reaction of this one's wife. This one's wife is consumed with envy. She cannot help, because of the way that her narcissism functions, to keep one eye on what the British royal family are doing. Notwithstanding the fact that she has maintained that she doesn't really want anything to do with them, demonstrating the usual hypocrisy of the narcissist, she says, I'm not bothered about titles, whilst clings on to hers, that she feigns disinterest in what the royal family are doing, but then spends a lot of time criticising them, smearing them, and of course watching what they are doing. This one's wife believed that she should have been Queen of England. Given the fact that she married the Spare, who is some way down the line of succession, she still believes that she ought to be Queen, because she is that deluded. She believes that she should be numero uno. That has been drummed into her by her narcissism, from a very young age, that she should be the one that's looked at, praised, adored, admired, admired, that women want to dress like her and men want to knock her hip out, that everybody wants to be around her because she's so magnetic, fun, interesting and chariz charismatic. And yet, when people do not talk about her, she cannot stand it. When they talk about other people, she cannot stand it. When the attention is on other people, she cannot stand it. When that attention goes elsewhere, and it's someone such as the one who got away, William, and the nemesis, Catherine, it burns, it wounds. It makes this one's wife feel so weakened and vulnerable that her narcissism then has to ignite her fury as a consequence of causing her to be motivated to take alternative action to regain control, either directly, indirectly, or from a position of withdrawal. And once again, she faced a huge threat to her control as a consequence of the reaction, or you might say, non-reaction from the British royal family. Lucy Bannerman, Ben Ellery, Jack Malvern, and Sam Rucker Report in the Times, King Charles and Royals put on united front after Bell End Game claims. Senior Royals put on a show of unity in the wake of racism allegations as the King was joined by Queen Camilla and the Prince and Princess of Wales at the annual diplomatic reception on Tuesday evening. And, as you can see in the picture, how regal they all look. The men looking dapper, the ladies looking elegant. Once again, the nemesis scoring high in the fashion stakes. Despite controversy over the improbably named plastic-faced Weasley Lick Spittles Lieutenant Omid Scobie's new book, Bell End Game, the most senior members of the royal family came together to welcome more than 500 members of the diplomatic corps in the state rooms at Buckingham Palace. What an event. A narcissist would be loving it. All of those individuals, so easy to control because they come to see you. All of those individuals fueled to suck up. Character traits galore and the facade getting a good old workout. The two couples posed together before the white tie event. Scobie's book 
rehashed previous accusations by the Duchess of Sussex that royals allegedly asked questions about the skin colour of her and Harry's unborn son. Dutch versions of Bell End Game were pulled from bookshelves in the Netherlands after it named the King and Princess of Wales as the two royals at the centre of the row. The Queen, 76, wore a cream-embroidered evening gown by Fiona Clare and a diamond brooch previously owned by the late Queen Elizabeth. The diplomatic event on Tuesday came as reports showed Scobie had admitted that his latest book on the monarchy was rushed out at lightning speed. The book's acknowledgments, which may come back to haunt the author in light of the royal race row, may also make note of the insane translation times. He wrote, Writing a book like this at lightning speed is not easy. And he didn't really write it, did you, Omid? It was a copy-and-paste exercise. It suggests that pressure to get the book into shops before Christmas may have been a factor in the embarrassing publishing error that led to Charles and the Princess being mistakenly named in connection to the Royal Race Row in the Dutch version. You can peddle that if you want, Mr Scobie. Nobody's buying it. The book's acknowledgments thank the foreign rights managers at his American agency for bringing the book to new foreign markets, even with insane translation times. A source claims that United Talent Agency had earlier sent a draft version to Xander, which did contain the names. The Duchess of Sussex kick-started a royal guessing game when she told Oprah Winfrey that an unidentified member of the monarchy, not the late Queen or Prince Philip, had raised concerns and conversations about how dark Archie's skin might be when he's born. Revision of history, smearing. Scobie claimed in his latest book that there were not one but two royals involved in those conversations, but maintains he did not name them in any of the versions of the manuscript he submitted. There has, so far, been no further explanation from Scobie, his agency, or the publishers as to how the names ended up in early Dutch-language versions of the book that went on sale in the Netherlands and Belgium last week. A new Dutch version without the names will be released on Friday. Controversy doesn't appear to have inspired a surge in sales. Bell End Game sold 6,448 copies in Britain in its first five days on sale between November 28th and December 2nd, according to Nielsen Bookscan. By contrast, Finding Freedom sold 31,000 copies in its first five days and Spare sold a record 467,183 print copies in its first week. While Finding Freedom reached first position in the hardback non-fiction chart in its first week, Bell End Game is 16th. This not only goes to show once again how the attempt to drum up controversy and thus publicity for the book to drive sales has backfired, but also how the smearing generally has not impacted. Very few people accept that Charles and Catherine are racist. It will only be the deluded sugars that do so. Anybody else forms the view that it is a nonsensical smearing. And the royals have ignored the scandal. The king and queen and prince and princess of Wales put on a united front in white tie and tiaras as they attended the annual diplomatic reception at Buckingham Palace. And Catherine was there wearing a tiara which would infuriate this one's wife. The fact that these members of the royal family have not reacted to what she's attempted to achieve by way of smearing has nullified that attack upon them, and that will infuriate this one's wife. Moreover, such a show of unity at a regal event with them looking great in photograph will also have this one's wife seething. The fact that she can see the nemesis wearing a tiara, smiling, looking beautiful, engaging with people, will have the cups and saucers being flung through the air in Monty shit show as there is an explosion of her heated, ignited fury. Harry will be putting on his tin hat and running for the chicken coop, trying to stay out of the way of this latest manifestation of heated, ignited fury. The fact is, with the nemesis ignoring her and the nemesis carrying on, 
The fact with the king ignoring her and the king carrying on, ditto Prince William and Queen Camilla, it negates this one's wife. She stamps that cloven hoof, demanding, acknowledge me, react to me. She has to have them respond, because that signals to her control and also the provision of fuel. By being starved of a reaction, she's starved of fuel, but more importantly, she's not given the control that she seeks. Ultimately, she will achieve that control, because she will jettison them from a position of withdrawal. But before she gets to that point, she suffers that sensation of feeling weakened, wretched, second best, and then the fury comes as the narcissism kicks in, trying to defend her against this latest attack, which, of course, is of her own doing. This one's wife, of course, has made repeatedly shitty decisions. And there you have it. She's pap walking across a parking lot, the Duchess of Parking Lot, dressed in shabby black clothing and a green baseball cap, whilst her nemesis, thousands of miles away, looks radiant and regal, wearing a tiara. It's enough to make this one's wife snap her own plastic tiara in her hands in Monty Shit Show as she explodes. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.